All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Sam Garcia, and I'm the president of Futuro McAllen. Um, on behalf of Futuro McAllen, our membership and our board, we'd like to welcome you all to the 2013 City of McAllen Candidate Forum. Um, we have a, uh, a good program for you tonight. Uh, Futuro McAllen is a citizens group dedicated to advocating for quality of life issues in the city of McAllen. Uh, and one of the most important things that we do uh, out of all the programs that we put on in a given year is uh, this candidate forum. Um, this is a chance to hear from the folks who um, are running for uh, elected office in the upcoming May election. And uh, tonight we have a, uh, a uh, panel of uh, members of the media and one Futuro board member who are going to ask questions, the candidates themselves. And tonight's panel will be moderated by uh, Futuro McAllen board member and well-known radio personality, Davis Rankin. Um, so, um, and, and before anything, I think, you know, I'd like to just applaud all the candidates for being here tonight, for facing the citizenry. you for your for your spirit of public service and and for uh, the things that you do for McAllen so without further ado I'll turn it over to Davis Rankin thank you all right thank you very much I can see I'm gonna have to be like this all night long let's start with the media panel get those introductions done for Univision radio which is KGBT Brenda Huerta the uh, advanced news journal Greg Wendorf the monitors Dave Hendricks and Asking questions uh, sort of from a more Futura point is uh, Monica Stewart, who is also on our board. And then we're going to go in um, ballot order for answering questions. We're going to do the PUB first, and then we'll do the city commission. And then Jim Darling is at a county function and will be here, um, will be here later. So I think that's all we got to do there. The, the PUB guys... Um, <laughs> are running for a position. They run by trustee places. Uh, and the Public Utility Board governs uh, water and sewer issues, the unglamorous side, but uh, some would say the real powerful side of city government, the um, uh, extending pot drinking water and taking sewage away. So uh, the first question will go, uh, again, in ballot order, uh, PUB place uh, A. Uh, Mr. Iram Gutierrez, if you'll get up to the microphone, and you have the question. The question. Uh, for the PUB uh, candidates is, if elected, what approach would you pursue to address our ongoing water issues? Well, uh, uh, first of all, thank you, Davis, and that's an excellent question, and it couldn't be more pertinent that, than it is today that, that we're moving to stage two uh, watering uh, uh, procedures. Um, the first and probably the most important thing that we need to do is that we need to continue urging our state and federal government to have Mexico abide by the 1944 Water Treaty. Uh, what Mexico owes uh, the United States a lot of water, and uh, that would help solve a lot of our problems. Uh, but what can we do locally? I think that's, that's very, very important. Uh, one of the things that I think we need to do is, is uh, we need to make sure that we have the most efficient and effective uh, uh, surge and water system uh, hopefully in the country. Uh, as of, for the last three years, uh, the uh, city of McAllen has purchased pro approximately 8 billion gallons of water. Out of those 8 billion, approximately a billion gets lost. We buy 8 billion and then we lose track of a billion. Uh, uh, probably, probably about 10% of our water, we lose track of it. Somebody has to pay for that water. We do, the ratepayers. And with water as becoming as scarce as it, as it is today, we have to do the best that we can to make sure that every drop of water that, that we buy that's out there is delivered to our customers. And Thank you very thank much. You. Uh, Mr. Amos, I fail to say they have a minute and a half uh, to answer these questions. <laughs> oh, sorry. You're right. I'm wrong. That fellow right there. Good to see you. Could you repeat the question again, Davis? The question is, if elected, what approach would you pursue to address our ongoing water issues? Well, I would continue many of the things that we're already doing. 
Um, number one, we've already started uh, uh, direct conversation with, with the authorities in Mexico to try and get them to release the water that is already owed. Number two, the, the amount of water that we utilize is utilized very, very efficiently. The loss that my opponent alluded to is primarily because of the delivery of that water, and that's through the irrigation districts. And that's where most of that water is lost. We have only a 10% or less loss within our system as far as the water we once receive and we distribute through the city. It's only a 10% loss to leakage within the system or loss in the process. So we do have, if you look at statistics, it's high, that's a high, very high rate of efficiency. We have worked extremely hard over the last four years to increase efficiency. We've re-rated our, our water treatment facilities with technology rather than footprints of additional filtering to where we are producing almost 10% more, actually 21% more water out of the same size plant that we had previous to that. So efficiency is where we're working at. Water conservation, we voted last uh, a couple of weeks ago to implement stage two of water conservation. That's mandatory water conservation. That's actually the first step. We've always been in a situation of, uh, of water conservation on a voluntary basis, but we will continue many of the processes that we've already implemented. Thank you very much, Mr. Amos. For PB Place D, first up, Jaime Enriquez. You have a minute and a half. Um. What I'd like to do uh, is, uh, is I, I would like to bring the approach of getting with all the other cities to, because this isn't just a McAllen uh, problem, it's a regional problem. So I would like to get all the other cities, FAR, Mission, Edinburgh, get them involved and see if we can try to get something going uh, uh, to bring more additional water, either by uh, looking for wells, water well, underground water, uh, uh, at, when I was on the board back then, 13 years ago, or 10 years ago, uh, we talked about de desalination of, uh, of uh, seawater. So we need to get uh, Brownsville involved in this and Harlingen involved. Like I said, this is all regional, so we need to put our, our heads together and try to resolve this issue of the water so shortage. Thank you very much. Ernie Williams. Thank you for being here. My name is Ernie Williams, as Davis said. Uh, I think three things have to happen uh, if you're running to uh, take the position for the Mac Allen Public Utility Board. Number one has to be in place is we have to have a strict code of ethics and we have to have a strict adherence to our conflict of interest po policies. Uh, it all starts there. Our moral compass has to be going in the right direction. We have to be led by someone much greater than we are to make the right decisions for the citizens of Mac Allen. Number two, we must practice fiscal responsibility. Uh, your Mac Allen Public Utility is in good um, shape right now financially. We've got a double A plus bond rating. That means dollars saved for you, the taxpayer, rate payer, uh, to citizens of Mac Allen. It's over 42,000 plus of you out there. So we got to maintain fiscal responsibility in order to be take advantage of opportunities as we move into this higher drought restrictions that we're faced with today. Thirdly and lastly, we need to continue to find alternative sources of water. We just finished drilling a well that got completed by the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality uh, that produces 1.2 million gallons of water a day for our city. We use 29 million, but it's a start. We've got to protect evaporation, evaporation from our reservoirs to your faucet. We lose a lot of water. We've got to do a better job of getting it there. We also have to find other alternate sources of water, but don't forget, they're all expensive, and we've got to maintain a competitive edge with other cities as far as producing that water to you. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Williams. We uh, have a statement from the lone candidate for PUB Play C, Mr. Albert Cardenas. Normally we don't allow this, but since he's unopposed and couldn't be here. Okay, so I'm putting on my... Albert Cardenas face. Uh, my name is Albert Cardenas. Hang on for a second. He's unopposed until the end of filing, March, March 11th. So he's unopposed for right this moment. Okay. Ahem. 
and I'm quoting, my name is Albert Cardenas, and I was born in McAllen and lived here my entire life. I'm a hometown boy, and I went to high school in McAllen. I run a small business from McAllen. I've served on the Planning and Zoning Commission for over six years, from 2000 to 2006. As a subcontractor, I have a lot of experience with bids and contracts, and I want to bring my experience to the PUB board. I want to make sure that the, that the PUB money is used conservatively but smartly. The PUB board needs to continue to invest in new projects for the good of McAllen's future. Uh, but the PUB needs to continue to spend conservatively, and I think I'm the right conservative person to fill this board position. I plan on raising money from, for my campaign from friends and family and not from any contractors that do business with the PUB. That way I owe no favors to anyone but the taxpayers of McAllen. I believe that being on the PUB board is very important, and it's especially important now with the water crisis that the Valley and the City of McAllen is facing. The decisions the PUB makes on the water issue is important now and for the next 50 years. I am ready to and willing to help prepare McAllen for the next decade. Thank you. Signed, Albert Cardenas. All right. Let's give them a round of applause as they leave the stage, the PUB candidates. <laughs> While they're exiting, no, they, well, however y'all want to go. We'll, we'll, we'll go that way. Probably easier. <laughs> While they're exiting, <laughs> the um, commission districts, uh, the filing is all closed except for District 6, uh, which is um, the one Jim Darling, the now unopposed candidate for mayor, comes from. And those two candidates are here. There's a, a filing is open until March the 11th, as it is for PUB Place. Uh, place C. So now to the City Commission candidates. The City Commission, of course, is the main policy-making body um, of the city. They employ the city manager, who uh, is the chief executive, uh, as it were. So I guess you could call them sort of the board of um, the board of directors. Each candidate will get uh, a minute and a half to answer the question. We have told them most of them in advance what it is, uh, which is the, um, and I'll read it here in a second. And they'll have a minute and a half to respond. And then when we get to the questions from the reporters, they'll all just get a minute. So, and again, Aaron Seal is our timekeeper. If you hear something that you like or don't like, you find more information from the candidates outside in the hallway. And we're going to go in ballot order and sort of a round robin fashion so nobody ever goes first all the time. Um, the first question then, uh, which goes on your end, the far end, what do you see as McAllen's single biggest asset and our single greatest concern? How would you lead to address this concern? Well, that's a very easy uh, question for me to answer. But before I do, of course, I must admit that I have a biased opinion about that. Our greatest asset easily, easily in my mind is our educators, is our teachers. I have a biased opinion on that because my mother is an educator. And it just so happens that uh, on the way over here, I ran into Dr. Von Endy, a uh, professor of mine from Pan Am. I believe that educators are our greatest asset here in the city because they are the people that take care of our children during the day. They educate them during the day, and lots of times very, these children get their morals and their you know, sense of right and wrong from our educators. Uh, second to educators being our greatest asset, I would say that the, uh, the good public servants of the city are our uh, greatest accent after educators, that being the, uh, the police and the firefighters here that put their lives on the line for us on a daily basis. And uh, unfortunately, it's no secret, unfortunately the uh, firefighters, I'm sorry, the uh, police department here in the city have not been treated exactly as well as they would like to have been uh, by the past commission and the past mayor. Uh, that is something I hope to rectify. I hope to have a better ongoing relationship with the uh, police and the firefighters here in the city. And um, I think it's a real shame the, the way they've been treated, to be quite honest. Thank you. All right, next to uh, Mr. Pebley. <clears throat> thank you, Davis, and thank you uh, all the members of Futuro McAllen and the media for being here. And I uh, really want to thank the citizens of McAllen. This is, uh, this is impressive. I mean, for you all to come out here, uh, your own free time, and, and listen to us and, and try and get a better feel for, for what, we, uh, what we stand for. And, and I think that is what our greatest asset is in the city of McAllen, and that is the people. The people make the city of McAllen. Without the people, without, without you all being here, there wouldn't be any reason for the city to exist. There wouldn't be, be any need for us to provide 
uh, for the city to provide services and to provide uh, good streets, uh, drainage, water, police, fire protection, parks. So I think the, the, the citizenry of McAllen is our greatest asset. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think our biggest challenge, though, is, is our past success. Everybody, everybody here has, uh, has pride in the city of McAllen. And, and I think that any time you have a great organization and you've done well for years and years and years and you're a leader, sometimes you forget those things that, uh, that made you competitive, those things that made you really, really the best at what you are. You get away from your core values and your core sense of being. And I think that's our, one of our biggest challenges that we need to try and get back to is look back at our roots and say, what has made McAllen successful and what can we do to get back there? And I hope to be able to provide that. Thank you all very much. District number three, Omar Quintanilla. Thank you all for being here and thank you to Futuro McAllen for organizing this event. In my opinion, McAllen's single greatest asset is our local economy. The amount of goods and services that are produced here in McAllen totaled three and a half billion dollars on an annual basis. With that amount of production happening here in our city, it helps to keep our taxes low and it helps us to provide a good quality of life for the people here in McAllen. I believe it's imperative that we continue to foster that uh, growth instead of in impeding trade. Now on the flip side, what's the greatest concern uh, here in McAllen? I believe that it is the dropout rate. According to census.gov, McAllen is number two in the nation in terms of the dropout rate. And as you know, if there is a high dropout rate, as education is not, uh, as our citizens, as the residents of McAllen uh, are not as educated as it could be, uh, it will affect them later on in life. So what I propose is to improve the dialogue with our, our school districts, college and university, so that we improve our educational standards here in, in McAllen and we, we focus on uh, obtaining that educational uh, success that we all uh, would want for our kids. Hilda Salinas. Thank you, Mr. Rankin, and thank everyone that's here. I want to especially thank um, the young students that I see here because I know we don't always get a lot of students involved, and that's very heartwarming to see you here tonight. So thank you for being here. Um, as far as the biggest challenge, I will tell you that the challenges facing McAllen today are, is, are not exclusive to McAllen. Uh, many of America's major cities and best cities are facing a lot of the same challenges we're facing today. We're facing things such as rising health care costs, which everyone's heard and seen about in the news, uh, rising pension costs. Additionally, we've seen cuts in state and federal aid. Um, one of the things that we need to make sure that we need to continue to, to push forward as a city, um, I believe very similar to what um, Tri Pebbly said when uh, my husband got the email first and he said, what's McAllen's greatest asset? Without even skipping a beat, my answer was, it's people. It's people are the strength. So we need to make sure that we maintain that strength for our city. We need to make sure that we become and we continue to be a city that is sustainable so that our quality of life will continue to be strong. A couple of years back, or several years back, the quality of life was measured by the size of your home or the number of cars you had. Now people are looking at, of course, sustainability, the environment. They're looking at our children. Are they going to be able to compete in the global economy. Those are the kinds of things that we need to continue to focus on. And thank you. Let me restate the question once more. What do you see as McAllen's single biggest asset and our single greatest concern? How would you lead to address this concern? 
Thank you, Mr. Rankin, and thank you all again for, for being here tonight. My name is Sonia Falcón, and I think that the, the greatest, biggest asset, and, and not to reiterate everything that's been said here, but it's you. It's you, because you have the power to make the decision about who is going to run the city, who is going to take charge, who's got the best experience. This is not a popularity contest. This is about our business. It's about our lives. And so experience is very important. And you and your families and your spouses and your children have the capacity to elect the officials that are going to take care of the city. Um, so you are our greatest assets. Our greatest challenge. Uh, is, is, is this federal budget and the state budget. I'm sure you all are tired of hearing about it, but the city is, is heavily based on medical, government, and retail. And these are the industries that are getting hit hard, and we need to focus on our business to see how we're going to stay and sustain this economy because McAllen is the greatest city to live in. I am a daughter of McAllen. When I graduated from high school, my mom worked at Griffin and Brand, and Othel Brand, back then Mayor Brand, gave me a $500 scholarship. And he said, Sonia, you are now officially a daughter of McAllen, and I expect you to serve the city. And I did. Last week, we had a golf tournament, and we raised $800,000 to give our students. And so I've never forgotten experience is important. Thank you. Veronica Vela Whitaker. Good evening and welcome everyone tonight and thank you McAllen, Pututo McAllen for hosting us this evening. McAllen's single biggest asset is the momentum in the city. McAllen is strong due to the citizens of McAllen. You the people make McAllen what it is today. We together unify ourselves to we make McAllen a stronger city. McAllen is moving forward and is financially strong with a sound economy and is the lead city in the valley. I remember I, when McAllen was known as the heart of the valley. Again, we are McAllen. McAllen is always proactive and not reactive. McAllen is never scared to move forward. McAllen always does what is best for us as citizens of McAllen. What is McAllen's greatest concern? Yes, it is the finances. It is the healthcare industry. It is education. All of the health care, all of the cuts that we have before us now are impacting McAllen as a whole, our tourism, our economy, all financially, and we are all getting, and we need to become one again and move forward and keep McAllen's momentum moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to get to the questions from the reporters, and we're going to go in sort of what I call round-robin fashion so nobody goes first all the time or last all the time. We'll start with Brenda Huerta of Univision, Univision Radio, and your, your question will go, please, first to um, Trey Pebbly. Um, it was referred to several times by uh, several other candidates. My question to you is, while McAllen does continue to grow in population, in land acquisition, median... Oh, thank you. Yes, my voice carries so much that I forget. We're being recorded by MCN. I'll give you the playback times <laughs> later. So they want to get your, they want to get you on mic. Oh my goodness! While McAllen continues to grow, population and land acquisition-wise, uh, median household income continues to hold the city back, as was mentioned, because of the education factor. What do you propose would increase income to keep up with the other factors that make McAllen a city people want to live in? That's a very good question. Um, I think that McAllen needs to continue to have a very strong and vibrant uh, business community. Uh, we, we need to be continually attracting companies from either outside of the valley or the state or trying to find ways to help existing current small or large businesses that currently reside in McAllen to be able to grow and to be able to benefit. Uh, by doing that, we, then we will be able to help foster good education and provide a source of jobs for kids in the future to be able to come back to, 
they won't leave the valley. You won't have the brain drain that some people uh, say we have now. So I think we have to have that strong business uh, economy and we have to have a place where our kids uh, want to come back to and, and have a future for them and their families in the future. Next we go to Mr. Keith. And again, you have one minute for all these uh, reporter questions. For the same for the same candidate? No, nope. if you'll ask um, Omar. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I guess my question would be, uh, I'm assuming since you're running for city commission, you've been following the commission's votes for the past 12 months at least, right? If, what do you think has been there, in other words, if you had been on the commission during the past 12 months, what, what do you think the biggest vote difference would have been in terms of you voting that if you had been on the commission, if you watched and you said, hey, that's not the way I would have voted on, on it. I would have done things different. So is, does one, one vote or one issue come to mind? Well, um, that's a good question. Uh, I, I think what, what I would have done differently is uh, back about... Um, a year ago when the city was looking to uh, extend a, inc a increase to its employees in terms of their pay. Uh, if you'll remember, the, uh, the commissioners uh, went back and uh, you know, this, is, this is a whole process, a budgetary process that, that takes place. And uh, during that process, uh, a decision is made of you increase your employees pay by a certain amount and that decision is made behind closed doors uh, and it is made uh, as a group uh, what I think was uh, something that uh, should not have been done is, is for um, for a member or two to have uh, proposed something different at the last minute and that's that that was my Something that I would have done differently is, is to come together and, and to agree upon something before uh, a decision is made. Ms. Salinas? I'm sorry. Dave, no, to, to Hilda. Sure. Uh, right now, uh, the city of McAllen tapes and broadcasts uh, all of the city commission meetings so that the public, if they're not able to attend, can watch them later and they also post them online, but the city doesn't post public comments and doesn't even tape them. Do you think McAllen should do that? Why or why not? McAllen at one time um, did, did do that effectively, and we went through a um, period of time where we decided as a collective whole that we wanted something a little more personal. So we went ahead and, and made the change uh, it is definitely something that can always be brought back up, you know, to for discussion. So it is definitely something I would reconsider. Um, I think at the time the decision was made, it was the most prudent that we had at the time being. If you all can get the mic right up to your f mouth, because some of you are soft-spoken. Not Brenda, but the rest of you. <laughs> And my question for Sonia. The city of McAllen's budget depends heavily on sales tax revenue. With the instability occurring in Mexico and declines in bridge crossing, how would you recommend to keep our high quality of services that McAllen is known for? Um, th that's a very good question. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that these budget cuts are going to have an impact on our economy uh, because the, the health care professions, and you know McAllen has a lot of health care professionals, and their staff are going to be hit. And then also our government employees, everybody's heard of sequestration, and, and then also uh, the retail, as Monica mentioned. And so I think that we need to attract different retailers to come to McAllen. McAllen's still a great place to shop. Uh, but I see us attracting uh, an Apple store. Uh, people get in line for that. And we need to reinvent retail. We need to work with our architects to make this an event. People have been shopping since the Roman days. They're not going to stop shopping. At least I'm not. And uh, so I, I think we just need to 
be creative about why people come to McAllen and that's to shop and then to help. I have a lot of relationships with our federal and state officials to help, student, to help us get more resources. Thank you. Brenda. Let me ask uh, a question related to, we were speaking about bridges just a moment ago. So I'm going to address this question to uh, Ms. Vela. Ansaldua's bridge, McAllen has an interest in it. The plans continue to develop the Ansaldua's bridge even though the federal government has already advised that it won't even begin to look at possible funding for southbound traffic until 2015. Now, do you feel this is good pre-planning, doing what the cities are already doing, including McAllen, or is it putting the cart before the horse situation in light of the budgetary constraints that the city faces and that the federal government faces? Right now, we are, we are not receiving funding from Ansel Dewis Bridge, you're absolutely correct, and it's not till 2015. And I understand that the custom agents that they were placing here in McAllen for Ansel Dewis Bridge are also going to be furloughed. That is going to hit the economy as a whole. First of all, they have transplanted many of these um, employees, government employees, to the valley, mainly to McAllen. Most of them come and live in McAllen because we are the heart of the valley. Our edu we are not going to be able to fill our schools, um, housing. It is an overall effect on the valley. Some of those custom agents also will go to Sherryland. And again, it, it impacts our economy. So we need to be proactive as leaders in order to, to take care of these problems before it gets away from us. Thank you. Now, Greg, a question for uh, Mr. Elizondo. Right. I was going to ask you, in what way has the city treated the fire and police department's personnel so badly? And as a follow-up, why should the people at San Fire Department be treated any differently than the people out in public works picking up garbage and so forth? Well, they shouldn't be treated any differently. Uh, as pertaining to other people there in the public works, uh, they've been treated unfairly, I, I would assess because they haven't been receiving the benefits that they have been asking for, the police union, among other things. Um, I spoke to uh, the president of the police union on the phone a couple days after I had filed for a nomination, and uh, he has an earful for anybody to listen to. Um, like I said before, it's no secret that uh, the police union and the police in McAllen in general have not been treated very well by this uh, pe previous administration. Um, I know for a matter, as a matter of fact, Mr. Quintanilla has also talked to the head of the police union. It's clearly an issue that's at the forefront, but should they be treated any differently? No. But should they be treated better than they are? I absolutely believe that they should be. All right, Dave, your question will go first to Omar. I'm sorry, Trey. It's all right, Dave. <laughs> You can skip on over. <laughs> we may have invented the perfect, impenetrable right. system. <laughs> Mr. Pebley, uh, does McAllen need a new development code? Why or why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, I think that McAllen needs to look at its existing codes. I, as I said when I visited with you in my office when I was talking about uh, my announcement, <clears throat> I don't think that if you have specific individual problems, you rewrite the entire bill or you rewrite the entire code. I think you need to look at the specific problems you have and address those. I mean, you take your own personal lives, for example. If you have a specific problem in your life that you know how to address, you don't rewrite everything you've been doing all these years and uh, to, to try and address this one problem. No, you go out, you assess what the problem is, you assess how you fix that, best fix that problem, and then you implement it. And that's, uh, that's my position. So, no, I don't think it needs to be entirely rewritten. Thank you. The city of McAllen has lost some big retail boxes to other cities because of incentives. 
Do you believe in incentives? Why or why not? Uh, I absolutely do believe in incentives. Uh, I believe that in the marketplace, just like in banking, we have to compete. We have to attract companies to our area uh, that we want. We have to attract uh, businesses uh, and industries to our area that we don't have today. Uh, in, in terms of incentives, I, I believe that uh, it is imperative that we be aggressive and that our approach to attracting companies to McAllen is you know, what's it going to take to bring you to McAllen? What's it going to take to bring your company uh, over to McAllen? If we, get, uh, if we really want to attract companies and, and industries uh, to our city, uh, we need to take a uh, more aggressive approach uh, so that our economy continues to be vibrant and we continue to experience our high quality of life here in McAllen. This is a question for Ms. Solis. The uh, McAllen Convention Center, how do you plan to make it profitable? Do you plan to have the McAllen Chamber take it over, or would you continue to finance it with the hotel taxes to the extent that the city has already done so? The McAllen Convention Center is still, um, the, the area itself, Brenda, is still a work in, in progress. Um, I think one of the key viable things that we were um, hoping for to make our convention center as viable as it possibly could be was to attract the hotels that, that were needed to the area. And as a result of the difficult economy that, that our nation has faced, we've struggled a bit in, in, that, in that light. Um, hopefully that will be changing soon. Um, we will continue to work with the chamber and, of course, uh, the staff to do everything that is absolutely possible to continue to attract conventions. It is it's coming around slowly, but it is definitely moving in, in, in a better direction. Thank you. Yeah, Ms. Falcon. I was just wondering, you know, um, down here anyway, we're dealing with a public relations issue, I think, in terms of border violence and so forth. And you hear about conventions not coming down here and so forth, even though obviously there's a big difference between this side of the border and the other side of the border. So my question is, do you think that McAllen and, and the region as a whole is doing enough to get the word out that, hey, you know, it, we're safe down here. Come down here, enjoy it, and, and so on and so forth. You know, I think that we could be doing a better job. Um, one of the, the leadership courses that I'm involved with is, is the Texas Lyceum, and we they develop leaders for the future of the state of Texas. And I've got friends in Austin, Waco, Lubbock, and they tell me, hey, are you guys at war in the valley? Do I hear a helicopter when I'm talking to you on the cell phone? I said, I am at the mall. <laughs> and I said, I, there's no war here. And if you all were at the mayor's state of the city address, you know, Mayor Cortez mentioned how the crime rate here has been at its all-time lowest. So we are doing a good job to protect our borders, and we are the first line of defense. But I think that we can work with the state and the federal government to make it better, okay, so that we can get the word out. Okay, that does need to happen. We need to get the word out that this is a safe area for people to come. And we need to keep that, the, our industries going and growing so that people aren't afraid to come to the Valley. Thank you. If elected, uh, would you support dissolving uh, Hidalgo County uh, Water Improvement District number three? Why do I always get the rough ones? <laughs> I am not knowledgeable enough yet, and I have not gotten my feet wet, literally speaking, um, as to whether or not it should be dissolved. I wanted ways, the pros and cons on what is better for the city of McAllen. So therefore, I am going to just refrain myself from answering yes or no until I further investigate all the pros and cons of Water District Number Three. Do you believe in term limits 
And if so, what do you believe is the appropriate amount of terms a mayor or city commissioner should serve? I could not be more pleased that you asked me that question. Um, term limits is something I very, very, very much believe in. If the President of the United States is subject to term limits, I believe the mayor and the commissioners of the city of McAllen should also be subject to term limits. I even believe the governor should be subject to term limits, but that's a different conversation. If it were up to me, the mayor would serve two terms and the commissioners would serve two terms. Plain and simple. That's it. Brenda. I'm going to go to the environmental side, Mr. Pebley, and um, ask you a question about the McAllen Botanical Gardens. Do you think it's feasible to reopen it with city funding, or are you more open to having the coalition raise funds and give approval for the park to reopen with those funds with no funding from the city, only upkeep funding from the city, or matching funding for all aspects of the gardens and the adjoining park? A lot of moving parts in that question there. Um, I, you know, I remember when I was a little kid, and I remember my, my mom actually taking me to the botanical gardens, and uh, I don't know, maybe six, eight years old, something like that. But I actually remember going there, and I thought, you know, this is a really neat place because you, you drive along, and then you go in this the way I remember it, and that was a long time ago. Uh, you go in there, and there is a, a waterfall, I believe, and some some like beautiful tropical plants and large trees. And you know, to a six or eight year old, it's like you're in a jungle. And so, I think it is crucial that we we bring it back. We we try to or or something like it. Maybe not in that exact spot. Maybe somewhere else in the city. But I think it's crucial that we have an environment where people and kids can go and see something like that and truly appreciate nature. Now, as far as the funding of it goes, I, I'm open to, to all, all aspects of looking at it to see what makes the most sense to the citizens uh, and what fits best with, with our budget. I mean, that's, that's something that changes uh, annually, and I think we need to look at it strongly and uh, come up with a, with a solid approach. I was wondering if uh, McAllen never came under a budget uh, crunch and uh, it was a choice between cutting taxes, I'm sorry, raising taxes. Everybody like cut taxes, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah it was a choice number. between uh, raising taxes and cutting services across the board, right? If you looked out at all of the audience members out here, what do you think that they would be in favor of, raising taxes or cutting services across the board? Look across to the audience that are here or... If we took a poll, you know, I, you know I, I don't think that anybody in McAllen would want their services cut. Uh, and so I would first be looking at the approach of, of increasing uh, taxes uh, because here in McAllen, we all enjoy a certain amount of uh, services. Uh, once you start cutting those services, once you start reducing your, uh, the amount of, uh, of things that you do for other people, you're going to be getting people coming over to, to City Hall asking, why are you doing this? Uh, and it's going to cause a lot of problems. And plus, the, McCown's a leader. You know, we, we, we don't want to cut services. Uh, we want to constantly be improving and offering better things to our citizens. So I, I would be open to uh, an increase in, in taxes, if that was the case. Commissioner Salinas, uh, during his State of the City address, the mayor voiced uh, some fairly strong opinions on collective bargaining and suggested that perhaps McAllen should reconsider uh, collective bargaining for police and firefighters. Uh, where do you stand on that issue? I think um, we have the best fire and police department anywhere in South Texas. And they earned their right to collective bargain. The citizens of McAllen gave them that right. And it is a process by which there's give and take, and eventually you come out with a final product. 
I would not be in favor of doing away with collective bargaining. I think it is a good tool to keep um, the lines of communication open between our fire fighters and our police officers. Being mayor and commissioner is known to be a thankless job. Why would you want to do this job? <laughs> um, it makes me happy to serve. I have been serving the city of McAllen for over 10 years on the planning and zoning board and on the zoning board of adjustment. I feel as a daughter of McAllen that it's important to build our leaders. You need to start little by little. And I've reached that point in volunteering my services with the city as far as an advisory capacity. I'm ready to move on to the next level to be able to enact change, to be able to vote for change in our city, to keep our citizens at the highest level of quality of life, to keep attracting business to the city. This is where I was born. This is where my family is. This is where I will retire. And we need strong leadership that understands the business community, that understands our neighbors to the south, that understands the issues that are facing the city, and that is ready to start the day you get elected. Ms. Vela Whitaker, what would you do to bring in more high-tech and higher-paying jobs to McAllen? And what do you feel would serve to entice these companies to this city? To bring better, bigger businesses to McAllen, first of all, we need to market McAllen as a wonderful place to live. We need to market what we have in place. Our educational system, our schools are strong. Our crime rate is low. To start off with, we live in a safe city. We need to also entice them with incentive packages. So when they do come to McAllen, they have a reason to be here. They have a reason to want to live here. And we need to continue to move McAllen forward and make McAllen where everyone wants to live. So we need to market ourselves as the heart of the valley and the best place to live. Yes, Mr. Elizondo, I was going to ask you what, um, in other words, what community involvement have you been in in the past couple of years, let's say yourself, that would, would give you the, uh, the wherewithal to run for city commission and, and beyond the city commission? Um, I believe in selfless service. Uh, I believe it's, uh, I've served in the military for a number of years. Uh, my family believes in selfless service. I have a middle brother as we speak that's at uh, Fort Benning, finally uh, going infantry. Uh, I used to make fun of him because he went to Relax in Jackson and I went to Benning School for Boys. So I always used to tease him a little bit about it, but he finally made his way to Benning. That young man right there in the red shirt, the second he turned 17, he also signed up to join the military. So um, I believe in service. I, I am personally, when I get elected, I am going to give every fluid ounce of my blood, sweat, and tears to McAllen. I will give McAllen 24-7 attention. It will be the last thing I think about when I go to sleep. It will be the first thing I think about when I wake up in the morning. I don't have a business on the side. I'm not trying to criticize my opponent. I don't have a business on the side. When I get elected, McAllen is going to be my sole effort, 100% of my time and effort is going to go to McAllen. Thank you, sir. How, how are you going to make an income then? Uh, I will worry about that if you don't mind, sir. <laughs> Mr. Pebley, uh, on the commission you would represent uh, District 2. What is the uh, most important issue facing uh, Northwest McAllen right now? Quality of life, uh, I think, is, is something that's very important to to the citizens in District Two. Uh, you know, uh, due to the direction of uh, Commissioner Bedetta, who's who's here with us tonight, uh, he's uh, he's done a, a great job, in my opinion, for the last 12 years, and uh, and I think he he deserves a, a round of applause for everything he's done. <laughs> But what I would what I would focus on is is continuing on, uh, making sure that we have good parks, making sure that we have good uh, 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 good drainage, good streets. Uh, I think we need to try and get some more business into that area, uh, maybe some more 
restaurants, small retail, mom and pop. It's more of a uh, it's more of a household community. Uh, you know, there there aren't the big boxes and such as much. And I think so. It's a little bit diverse from other parts of the city, but that's what I would focus on. The downtown entertainment district has fallen under a microscope recently. If elected, what guidelines would you propose for growth in that area and help people feel safe? Growth and, and helping people feel safe. Uh, what I would do in the downtown entertainment district is, number one, uh, take it from not only 17th Street, but take it beyond that street so that the entire downtown uh, becomes an entertainment district. Uh, and and what, what we need downtown, we need more family-oriented establishments. We need coffee shops. We need mom-and-pop deli places where the, we could, where, where the demographics can shift. And we have more people going downtown <laughs> instead of uh, the situation that we have today. In terms of uh, safety downtown, uh, we need to increase the amount of officers that, that patrol the downtown area, and we also need to uh, use the camera system that has been effective uh, so far. Uh, and, and that camera system helps in, in, uh, in, in mostly after the fact, uh, uh, investigating crime. But the amount of officers uh, that are patrolling downtown would help to deter crime. Thank you. Commissioner Solis, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Who, who, am, who do I have next? Ila Salinas. Salinas. I'm sorry. I was thinking of Hilda Solis. Um, Commissioner Salinas, going back to the question uh, about bringing more high tech and bringing more of the, the higher paying jobs into the area of McAllen. Do you think that our current educational institutions, including our school district, are being used to their fullest potential to be able to draw these businesses in with a high quality educated workforce? Our school district, Brenda, is among one of the best. We're also very blessed to have a South Texas College in our midst. In terms of our students being able to hold their own out in the global world, we have students going all over the country um, off to college. I think what is critical that we need to make sure that we do, and it's, like I said, it's one of those challenges that we have to face with declining uh, federal aid and declining state aid, uh, the retraining of the workforce is where it could get difficult. Our students are just as capable as any other students in the country in terms of being able to hold their own, being able to hold their own across um, any type of job that is that is placed before them, <coughs> as long as they go forth and do what it needs to to do what they need to do in order to to move forward. Yeah, Ms. Falcone, you know that um, people who work for big businesses and in communities, they're often unfairly, people say, hey, that, that business or bank or whatever is trying to get some influence on the city commission. And so if that, if that was ever said about you during it, how would you differentiate between your duties on the city commission versus your business sector involvement and so forth? Um, absolutely. Uh, I, I work for a bank. And I don't have any other side businesses. I'm not a real estate investor. Uh, my record on PNZ and ZBOA stand. Anytime there's been a conflict, whether they were a customer or a family member, I've always abstained. Even though there were several situations where they say, why are you abstaining? You don't need to abstain. I always did. I stand on my name. I worked 21 years for IBC Bank to build my name and my reputation. And I took advantage of an opportunity to take care of my family in order to move to another bank. But my name and my reputation stand and my record stands. And it's out there. There's nothing to hide. I will always make the best decision for this community and for the citizens of this community because ultimately the people that I work with and the people that I live with and my family are in this community. Thank you. 
Recently, the city of McAllen uh, solicited bids uh, for the uh, old Civic Center uh, property. Uh, what would you like to see the city do uh, with that key uh, real estate? <clears throat> well, it's sad that the Civic Center is up for sale because I grew up just blocks away from the Civic Center. So it has a lot of, I have a lot of memories at the Civic Center. Um, it is also said that there's a possibility that they're going to bring in another performing arts center into the McAllen area, which is good. We need McAllen performing arts centers. We need the arts. We need ballet. We need theater. We need our kids to grow up in an area where they are, um, they have all of that in front of them so that we no longer have to go to San Antonio or other big cities to see a number one the movie or to see a um, show. We can do that for our citizens and for McAllen here in our own city. So if the Civic Center goes, is sold, again, it's going to bring us indirect econ economic uh, monies. And so it's going to be a win-win situation for McAllen. We will have our own performing center and the Civic Center today will be sold and made and make money for our city. What problems exist in your district, and how do you propose to fix them? Well, the problems that affect my district don't exclusively fit, affect my district. They affect all of McAllen. Um, we've talked at length about the safety issue here in McAllen, and um, the police statistics do indicate that crime is going down, which is a good thing. Um, however, there's a drug issue here in McAllen being not just McAllen, the whole Rio Grande Valley, being a border uh, city, everybody has a kind of a drug issue at the moment, unfortunately. Um, and uh, as said earlier, there are issues here about the safety. Are, are we at war? People keep asking. The answer is no. So I would say that the biggest issue here in uh, not just my district, but in the, the entire city is uh, maybe spillover violence, I suppose. I think we, that needs to be addressed a little bit better. If I may, from now on, can we do, we're running real, a little way ahead on time. We could do a minute and a half responses. If that makes a, if that makes it, so they don't have to cut themselves off. So you can ask longer questions. <laughs> Give me the history of McAllen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Pebley, one of the issues, and uh, several of the candidates have touched on this, is McAllen is touted as a great city, you know, fourth largest as far as economy and this sort of thing. However, recreation in this area is still lacking. What would you do to bring more of that in and what exactly would it be? Exactly. You're pinning me down here. Um, <clears throat> You know, you, you hear of a lot of things for recreation. Uh, there's been, uh, it, and when, when I think of recreation, uh, it's, it's not only parks, but you think of, uh, or I think of uh, professional uh, sports leagues. Uh, you know, there's the talk of uh, the soccer league coming in here. There's, you got the, the State Farm Arena, you have hockey. Uh, there's uh, the Performing Arts Center, the, which I, some people I think would may consider as recreation, they're able to re relax. So <laughs> I think it's, um, there's also been some controversy and, and talk about uh, tennis parks and uh, baseball fields and, and things of that nature. And, and I think that that is, that is important. I think we do need to look at trying to build upon our baseball fields and our baseball parks. I think that uh, doing something along the lines of tennis, uh, having some tennis uh, parks and fields, I think would be of great benefit because unbeknownst to me, there, there's a big market. There's a big economic driver whenever you're able to have tournaments and such and you bring in people from outside of the valley for a weekend to, they go to the restaurants, they rent hotel rooms, things of that nature. So. I think if you're able to do that and capitalize on the climate and the, the tropical, semi-tropical nature of McAllen, uh, it would be of, a, be of great benefit and an economic driver for the area. 
And Mr. Quintanilla, would you be in favor of um, uh, reinstalling, is it the right words, but re-implementing the public comments at the uh, city commission meetings if you were elected? You don't only have one vote, but <laughs> right. Sure. Uh, you know, what, what, uh, what I would be careful with would be uh, just to, to, to edit out any, any inappropriate uh, language. You know, obviously we don't need that broadcasted. Uh, but uh, public comment is is important uh, because it, you know it it, it does uh, bring about uh, the interest of the people. You know, if they're for adamantly for or against a particular topic, uh, you get to hear what somebody has to say. It might be your neighbor. It might might be somebody that lives down the street. Uh, and, and you can internalize it and uh, think about it, or you can take it for a grain of salt. Uh, but it, it, is, uh, it is up to you, and uh, you don't have to watch it if, if you don't want to. But, uh, but it, it would be good for that public comment time to be available uh, for the public to, to have access to. Commissioner Salinas, uh, one of the problems McAllen has had attracting uh, large retailers uh, to keep and shore up the city's retail base is that surrounding cities, including FAR, have offered very generous incentives. For example, they gave Costco a great package and they give a package to the restaurant in front of Costco. Should McAllen compete on that level? How can McAllen uh, retain its retail <laughs> advantage when re incentives like that are out there in the marketplace? Incentives are, um, I guess, a double-edged sword to a certain to a certain extent. Um, you will find that absolutely you're right in terms of it is a very competitive environment when you're talking about cities competing for other retail. Um, there is a risk, and there's always going to be a risk in in giving out too much. So you one needs to be very careful. In, in terms of what we're going to be accepting and not accepting, most cities will not divulge what their incentive policies are, simply to maintain that you know, competition going. Um, and I think just, of course we want to increase retail. Of course we want to you know, work on continuing to build our revenue. But just because someone uh, you know, dangles something in front of you and says, hey, I can give you X, you know, amount of dollars for increased revenue doesn't mean it's always a good deal. And those deals a lot of times are inherent in, in executive session. So people hear a specific retailer coming and they get all excited about it, but they don't get to see exactly all the fine details of what could have helped and what could have hurt McGowan. So that's what you need to be careful with. What difference do you believe exists if you win versus your opponent? Monica, um, I think that the difference is uh, I have prepared myself for this position. Uh, I have 21 years of banking experience in commercial, and I've worked with businesses here in McAllen and in different parts of the state and here in the Rio Grande Valley and with businesses in Mexico. Um, so I'm ready. I, I've served the city, and I'm ready. I understand accounting. I understand financing. I understand the business world, and I want to share my knowledge and continue to share my knowledge with the city. So my learning curve would be very short. But I think that we both want what's best for the city. We both do, because this is our home. And we want what's best for our citizens and our children. We don't want to give away our future by giving 30-year tax abatements to attract a retail <laughs> customer. People want to come to McAllen. They want to live here. Sitting across a lending desk, I can tell you that I always ask people who move here, why did you pick McAllen? And they say, because of the schools, because of the, the, the hiking, biking trails, because they have a good quality of life. 
That's why we picked McAllen. Westlaco was going to pay us more, but we want to live in McAllen. Rooftops, retail follows rooftops. And so our, our, our permits are down. And it's not the fault of the city, it's the economy. And so we need to continue to work. I can tell you from working in banking that it's difficult now to get a mortgage. But we can continue to work with our, our regulators to, to help with that. Thank you. Before we get to any more questions, we have um, arranged the order tonight uh, because Jim Darling, uh, who is unopposed for mayor, couldn't be here until about 7, 27, 30. So um, he's on his way, I'm told, should be here about 20 past, and then we'll ask him some of the same questions. But that's why we're really grilling these people, <laughs> which I think is just fine. I've even written down some of my own questions if they run dry. So, As a, a candidate for your district, what is it that you still feel needs to be done and hasn't been addressed? And what do you feel has been done well that you would continue adding to it? I am running for District 6. I was born in McAllen and have lived in District 6 for over six years. District 6 is what I call home. District 6 has grown. We've even added more homes to our district. So therefore, we need to address more people in District 6, and I plan to do that for the citizens of McAllen. Um, we've addressed a lot of different issues tonight. We've addressed Water District. We've just, just, uh, addressed violence. We've addressed um, incentive packages for people moving to McAllen. We've addressed recreational areas of McAllen. We've addressed the health care issues also. All of this are pluses for McAllen, and all of this is what makes McAllen stronger today. District 6 is a strong district. It is probably housed, I can remember, the, there are still people there today that I grew up with. So it is a strong district. Um, I just feel that because I am a public servant and because I am ready to give to the city of McAllen, that I will be there for, for the voice to be heard. I want McAllen to continue to move forward. It has momentum, and I want McAllen to keep moving forward and to be as strong as it is today in 50 years, in 10 years, just to continue to move forward and move together. Greg, before you go, before you get your question out, the uh, city secretary's office, Annette and Pearl are here. If you're not registered to vote, don't tell anybody, but then go register. <laughs> and that way you can vote for the candidate of your choice, as many times as you would like. <laughs> we, we can still vote twice in South Texas, Davis? Till, right till they catch you. That's, I was wondering if, if Mr. Elizondo, if you'd been on the city commission when they voted to increase the hotel motel tax 2%, which is now 2% higher than the neighboring cities, would you have voted for or against that? Mr. Wendorf, you have not thrown me a softball all night, sir. Where, where, did, you learn your, where did you learn your skill, if I may ask? Where did you? <laughs> um, would I have been in favor of, uh, of increasing the... Uh, the taxes, to be honest with you, on the uh, on the hotels is the question. Yes, sir. To be honest with you, I, I probably would not. I probably would not have been uh, in favor of increasing the taxes for the hotels. To be perfectly honest with you, but since I got a little bit of time, um, I want to address the incentives pertaining to the businesses. I would be in favor of the incentives. Um, I would be in favor of the incentives because bringing business down here is a good thing. It's a very very good thing. We want as many businesses down here as we can. You know. Uh, we talked about an Apple store. What would it take to get an Apple store down here? What kind of package can the city dangle in front of the Apple store to get it down here? Because the fact of the matter is, everybody knows in this room that if we do get an Apple store down here, that place is going to explode. Everybody loves Apple products. So um, I know I cheated a little bit answering a question that wasn't mine, but uh, I do believe in incentives. Mr. Pebley, going back to taxes for a minute. Uh, a little while ago, the commission had uh, 
was looking for more revenue options with sales tax stagnant and property tax flat. And there were a variety of options on the table. And the commission decided for the first time in a very long time to raise the property tax. How would you evaluate property tax increases uh, as a commissioner? And would you have voted for that property tax increase? First of all, I'm, I'm not a real big fan of, uh, of taxes, just like everybody in this room isn't a real big fan of taxes. Um, they're, they're a necessary evil. Uh, if we want, if we want services, if we want, uh, if, if we want the city to provide services, if we want good roads, good drainage, good water, sewer, if parks, uh, all these quality of life issues, we have to have a way to pay for them. Uh, I think it takes, it takes a very fine balance uh, to look at that. Uh, too much tax, and and you're going to be hurting the the citizens, and you're going to be hurting the businesses. So the city's no longer competitive, and it's not a good place to relocate uh, to, and not a good place to do business. Too little tax, you don't have enough uh, enough money to pay for the uh, goods and services that are demanded by the citizens, and and goods and services that are needed to attract new business, new folks to come down here and live. To answer your question on would I have voted for that tax increase on property taxes, yes, I probably would have voted for that. I wouldn't have liked it. I don't like raising taxes, but if it's something that, that absolutely has to be done, uh, then sometimes we just got to grit our teeth and bear it. And, but it should also be known that the city of McAllen still has some of the lowest property tax rates in the entire valley, if not the state. So that's, that's something to be commended for our past leaders. Today, every CBP officer at our bridges got a furlough letter. How do you believe this will affect us locally? And what would you do as a city commissioner to make sure Washington understands the border issues? That's a very good question. Uh, our, our, our residents have been affected uh, not only by the furlough, uh, which is the, the sequestration, uh, but, but also by uh, the uh, yeah, Medicare, uh, the, uh, the, the tax that was um, taken away, the discount tax that was taken away earlier this year. Uh, there are a lot of variables that are affecting uh, our residents. Not only is the economy affecting our residents, not only is the, the, the sequestration uh, affecting, uh, but, but there are others as well. Uh, what do we need to do? We need to focus on improving the job picture here in McAllen. Uh, it, it, has, it has improved over the last years, uh, but, but more can be done to increase uh, the amount of businesses here in McAllen uh, and the variety of businesses uh, that are here, the variety of industries that are here, so that we can attract uh, a quality talent and, and that our, our, uh, our students that are educated here would stay here. And like has been said before, uh, there is not uh, uh, students that, that go away and, and then stay away, but they, they go away, they come back to McCown because we need that, that talent, that talent pool here in McCown, uh, to be able to to work uh, in, in these in these uh, industries and these in these companies that we want to be here in McCown. Why don't we do one more question and we get closing statements? Commissioner Salinas, one of the the things that we always look at is the older sections of the city because those are considered not only historic in some instances, but in other instances, it's a part of the, the background and where you came from and the roots. What would you do for revitalizing those areas? There's um, several things that can be done, Brenda, and some of them have already um, been put in place, such, for example, as our um, historical society, historical preservation society that we um, you know, put together several years back so that we can start evaluating those areas and we can start finding so many times, you know, the, the city itself is, you know, it, it kind of just keeps going and we lose sight of what we have or we lose sight of, of what was there 
or we don't have a piece of particular information that, that can be beneficial. So this particular organization has helped us um, begin to see the downtown area in, um, in a different light so that we're able to preserve some of the, some of the uh, history that McAllen has. Along with that, of course, um, we do, I think we do need to do a little bit better job in working to revitalize some of the um, older areas of town. We've started to work with that through our um, CDBG and some of our um, housing projects that we have through um, what used to be uh, McAllen Affordable Homes. So um, we need to look to, we need to, to work on continuing to reinvest in those areas so that if you do a little bit, you, know, you put a different little house in the area, that kind of brings up pride in the neighborhood and, and you start to see other people you know, regain the pride in the area and then just kind of bring everything together again. Okay, closing statements are a minute and a half, um, probably a little over. <coughs> not that much over if you get carried away and then we have a statement uh, Sam will read a statement from the com from the candidate who's not here so I guess Ms. Falcone you're up I'm the first closing statement yes, ma <laughs> really so you, soon you'll be last in everyone's <laughs> heart though I bet well uh, first I want to thank you all for coming out and for those of you who stayed the whole time um, I, I hope that I have shared a little bit more of, of my experience, uh, but you know, to, just to let you know, uh, my family has been here for a long time. I was a migrant farm worker. I was, uh, first place that we lived in was in District 6 and was at the Memorial Apartments, which back then was known as labor camp. And we lived in army barracks. And now I have a beautiful home on South McAllen. And that it could only happen in the city. I believe that. This is why I want to serve. And I think that the city has been a good partner to its citizens. We've provided a high quality of life, a sustainable quality of life. But I think we also need to be generous with our business community. We need to open doors for them. We need to embrace their ideas and embrace their businesses and help them become stronger because the stronger they are, the more jobs that they will provide. You know, we have to work on bringing more people down, more people to want to live in this area. We have to work with our school districts. We need to be better partners. The school district in the city needs to be a better partner because there's not a McAllen Independent School District in the city. There's only McAllen. And I want to represent District 6. I want to share my values, my experience, and my knowledge to represent the city. And I want to work with our existing commission to continue to do the good work for our citizens. Thank you. I want to thank Uthuda McAllen for this evening again. I want to thank all of you for being here with us this evening. I want to also let you all know that I know it's not easy to sit out there, but it's just as easy to sit over here. <laughs> so um, I am District 6. I live in District 6. I represent, I hope to represent District 6 as your new McAllen City Commissioner. I believe in all of McAllen. I believe McAllen is strong. I believe it is a strong city. We are together. We are moving forward. We do have a strong school district. We do have strong businesses. Can they be stronger? Yes, they can. Can we move together forward? Yes, we can. I believe that together all of us can make a difference as we have in the past. I once moved away from McAllen and came right back and have enjoyed living back in McAllen. My boys are ready to go. One is gone and one is getting ready to go. And I hope that he is the same as me and comes back to McAllen. We need to stay together in order to move forward and to keep McAllen's momentum going. So I am running for McAllen City Commissioner, District 6. I am running for McAllen. And thank you all for this evening. Well, likewise, I'd like uh, to thank uh, Frutoro McAllen and uh, everybody that's here. And uh, 
the fellow candidates and especially the panel over here. Thanks for the, uh, for the grilling that you gave everybody over here. But uh, I'd like to thank uh, all my friends and family that uh, have uh, helped me thus far and that have volunteered their help and will continue to help. But um, tonight, when you go home, please bear in mind that, uh, that we are still a country at war and that there are brave men and women out there um, not as comfortably sleeping. They won't be sleeping as comfortably as you are tonight. And uh, keep them in your mind, keep them in your thoughts, keep them in your prayers um, as you go to sleep because uh, they're out there for us. But um, to close, I'd like to simply say this. I've served my country, I've served my state, and I'm dying to serve you, McAllen. Like, I cannot wait to serve you, McAllen. Thank you. I'd like to echo the, the thanks uh, to Futura McAllen and everybody being here in the, the uh, panel. Thank you all very much. Uh, I think it was a good night, good questions, and, and a good conversation. And it's a conversation that, that I think we need to continue to have. Uh, people ask me, well, why are you running for, for city commission? They're like, don't you have enough to do? Or you, know, you got two young boys you got to keep up with. And, and I said, you know, you're right. I, I do have a lot on my plate, and I do have, I do have a lot to do. But I, I, feel, uh, I feel indebted uh, to the city of McAllen. Um, you know, I grew up here. My family's been down here since the 30s. Uh, and uh, so pretty much have, have roots in here. And it's been, it's been good for our family. Uh, the city's been good. The region's been great to us. And, and uh, uh, appreciate that. And, and I want to make sure that uh, my boys, whenever they uh, they grow up and they go to school, they can either choose to get a, go to get a higher education uh, here in the valley or go away. And if they do go away, that there's something good for them to come back to. There's some jobs for them to come back to. That uh, there's a quality of life that's that, that goes with those jobs, where they uh, feel comfortable uh, raising their family. Uh, you know, I think it'd be, be great for uh, two or three more generations of Pebbles to be down here. There might be some people that disagree with me there, but you know, <laughs> but uh, but no, I think uh, I think this is a great great city, great region, and uh, and I look forward to, to doing uh, doing my best to, to serve everybody uh, everybody here. Thank you. I want to thank you for coming, and in particular, I want to thank my family who is here and, and uh, supporting me, and uh, uh, friends of friends of mine that are here as well. Uh, this election is about the future of McAllen. Do we want to continue along the same path that we have been going, or do we want change? Uh, I will make a top priority uh, economic development. I've been in banking for 15 years. I've been in behind a, a, a lending desk, and I have uh, had firsthand experience dealing with the business community, dealing with their needs on a daily basis, uh, addressing their needs, uh, whether it be financing, whether it be uh, looking for a new location. Uh, I'm in constant contact with the business community, and I want to make a change for McAllen as we continue to uh, focus on how to make this place a, a better place. Uh, in addition to that, I, I think one thing that we, we haven't addressed as much uh, these days is, is infrastructure, is drainage, is the deferred investment that we have underground. Uh, I've, I've looked at the, the, the master plan in, in drainage, uh, uh, and it's $130 million that we have to over, over the next nine years to uh, spend on drainage improvement projects. It's a, it's, a, it's a great amount of money, but it's something that needs to be done, and it needs to be done now. Thank you for coming. God bless you, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful evening. Ladies and gentlemen, most definitely I'd like to echo everyone's sentiments. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, it is, like I said, always heartwarming to see people actually uh, be very interested in their, in their city and in how their, their government is running their city. So once again, thank you and thank um, Davis Rankin and everyone who put the forum together. It's been an enlightening experience. Um, I am a longtime resident of, of McAllen. 
my love for McAllen runs very, very deep. I am a 40-year resident of District 4. I'm sorry, of District 3. I don't even know my district anymore. Um, Ida would not be happy with that right now. Um, jobs will go where people want to live. So we need to make sure that we keep attracting and expanding companies. Uh, people are moving to places that have smart policies and better resources. We want to make sure that we continue to develop um, human capital, that we maintain <coughs> developing the skills that our people have, and we need to keep developing um, efficiencies so that we can work together to take a regional approach to some of the things where we can actually save some money and begin to con or continue to move forward as a city. We've been on a very positive and stable path, and I'd like to see um, our city continue that. And I am <coughs> very willing to continue serving as I have served you for the last 12 years. Thank you. We have a statement from the guy who's not here, Scott Crane. Yeah, um, good evening. So I'm going to put on my Scott Crane face now. <laughs> um, I hereby declare District 1 a sovereign nation. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Scott says, um, this is a quote. I wish to extend my thanks to Futuro McAllen. I regret I am unable to attend this evening. This morning, Sasha and I took our children on a trip for their spring break, which was planned months ago. I would have liked to have been here tonight. Here's a brief outline of my goals for our city. Goal one, economic development. I want to continue to target manufacturing and bring good jobs to McAllen. While I've worked to recruit retailers and wholesalers to our community, the goal has been to anchor to anchor businesses that will draw shoppers from the greater region. While this is highly important to sustain our sales tax collections, we must be mindful that it is the jobs associated with manufacturing that will ultimately sustain these real uh, retailers. Excuse me. I will continue my work in this regard. Goal two, infrastructure. I want to work to bring added drainage improvements to Northeast McAllen uh, and continue our efforts in reducing traffic congestion. Uh, we need to widen Trenton Road and are currently working with the county to extend 10th to Monte Cristo. We are working on the re replacement of the bicentennial overpass with the help of Senator Hinojosa uh, because, as I have always been, I will continue to be fiscally conservative, seeking outside sources of funding for large projects such as this whenever and wherever possible. Um, I represent, or Scott represents, the city on the Hidalgo County Metropolitan Transit Organization Policy Board and cu is currently working to secure uh, funding for the widening of Ware Road from Buddy Owens to Auburn. Uh, goal three, safety. I want to continue our efforts in reducing crime and improve our relationships with the police and fire unions. Uh, I will support adding cameras to our primary intersections, central business district, uh, and parks, and will continue to support funding uh, our police and fire so they have the best equipment and training available. In every way that I can, I will encourage a healthy and honest and fair relationship with the unions. Goal four, quality of life. Uh, I am an avid supporter of our quality of life initiatives and will always be so. Um, I want to work on a financing plan to build the much needed baseball fields, the regional park behind Morris, reopen the nature center and connect uh, our iconic hike and bike trails on the north side of McAllen and to build the city's new auditorium currently in design. Um, and the final statement, there's so much I still want to do as your commissioner and I hope you will help me in this election th so that I can continue to serve you. I am enjoyed ser serving you to date and thank you for your continued uh, trust and support. That is signed Scott Crane, McAllen Commissioner, District 1. Let's thank the uh, commission candidates. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, thank you very much. We're going to ask, uh, as, as uh, Jim gets ready and we get everything uh, adjusted, he'll get the first question, he'll get the same question that, that the candidates for the commission got, and then we'll get reporters' questions. And we may end up a little bit early. We planned two hours, but which 
Well, we, we planned for two hours, but we made it a, a little bit shorter than that. Um, okay, the question, what do you see as McAllen's single biggest asset and our single greatest concern, and how would you lead to address this concern? Um, I think that our dynamic and diverse economy is our single greatest asset. You know, we just followed through a national economy that almost collapsed, and we made it through. Our sales tax went down. We finally made it back in sales tax to the collection levels in 2007. We actually had a jobs during the downturn in the national economy. We have uh, uh, an industrial zone in the Maquiladora business that is very diverse. Our economy is diverse from a standpoint of farming, manufacturing, retail. Uh, it used to be winter Texans was stronger, but we have a very diverse economy compared to really the rest of the state and the rest of the nation. We're blessed with two major hospitals and entertainment industry, including hotel and restaurants, and an entrepreneur spirit in our city. That makes, us, that makes us a great city for our citizens, both uh, quality of life issues and employment, and just enjoying the great things that God's blessed us with. All our right. biggest concern, is that the next one? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's maintaining and growing that economy. We have challenges. Uh, federal government's funding uh, mechanisms and policies have cost us hundreds of millions of dollars in our area, both in health care, education, and other federal programs that we're just starting to see the tip of the iceberg of the, how that affects people. I'll give you one example. At, at our hospital, we had to reduce overtime for people. Almost all that overtime was disposable income that doesn't go to our restaurants and businesses and stores, and people need that to pay their mortgages. And we're going to see more and more of that as federal and state uh, budget, uh, budget tightening happens. So we need to come up with a, a more diversified industry, more opportunities for our, our entrepreneurs um, to, um, to expand and grow. We need to uh, develop that interstate system. When we go to national companies that come down, one of the first things they ask is, are you connected to an interstate system? And we're not. And we desperately need that. One of the other things they look at is a crime rate, because national media uh, uh, depicts a wrong example of our area. I feel safer in McAllen than I do in Dallas, Texas, or San Antonio, but that's not the message that goes out. And so we need to refine that message and make sure that the national industries know that they can come here, that we have an educated, young workforce. We're a safe place to live and a great place to live. Why don't we do questions, one question from each reporter. Uh, Mr. Dawkins has two and a half minutes, We're, since he's unopposed, two and a half minutes to answer the question and that then he'll be able to summarize at the very end of it. And again, there's, and I don't know since uh, some of the candidates have left, if there's still stuff out in the hall from candidates if you want to get more information. So, um, Brenda, you want to start again? But yeah, good idea. Monica, you go first. Okay. That way you can relax. Oh, that sounds great. Um, Mr. Darling, you have been, um, you have really filled every facet practically of what the city has from city attorney to city commissioner to probably understanding the city more than anybody does. But this time around as mayor, what is your vision for the city and how do you expect to get us there? My vision for the city is I think really threefold. One is, um, something that I've kind of started as a city commissioner and in, in other capacities, and that's regionalization. You know, we worked, uh, the county judge and I worked on a bond issue. I worked with him, I should say. And we went to probably 15 or 16 town hall meetings talking about drainage. And what could be more important than drainage to a community? And what could be more of a regionalization process? That drainage issue passed with 75% of the vote, and I think it did because every community had a stake in it. There was a benefit to every community, and I think there's opportunities here to benefit all communities on a regionalization program. We have 23 cities, and we compete against each other, and I think that's healthy, but I think there's a lot of opportunities for us to work together um, to do that. One example I thought of a couple of days ago, you know, they had the Bass Pro Shop, and not whether we should have the Bass Pro Shop or not, but that was an example of we were competing against Harlingen. Maybe we could have gone to Edinburgh or, or Mission or one of the other cities and said, you know, together we could put a better package together than Harlingen could. And we could locate it because nobody knows half the time whether you're in McAllen or Edinburgh or Mission. I look out my window at the hospital. I work at Doctors Hospital in Edinburgh. And I look at McAllen houses out one window and McAllen businesses out the other. And so we could probably place that someplace where we all benefit it, split the sales tax, and maybe one out on a project that we all would have benefited in our citizens. Everybody would have had something as opposed to everybody having nothing. And so I think there's great opportunities for um, regionalization. 
Next one is education. You know, uh, when businesses come down, they, we have a young workforce, and we need to do a better job of educating it. I think the opportunity now to merge the university and provide a medical school is a turning point for our whole valley. I was in San Antonio Wednesday at UT Health Science Center San Antonio, and you wouldn't have recognized it from what it was 15 years ago. And I think we have that opportunity here if we all work together as a region and convince the legislature that we're worth it, because I know, I know we are. We also have a great opportunity to STC to provide from some training. When I grew up in high school, you went to the college route or you went to the trade route, and you got out and you had a good trade, you didn't need to go to college. And too many of us think that college is it and there's nothing else. And I think there's opportunities there working with STC, our school districts, UTPA, to provide opportunities for our young people. It doesn't mean going away to college and maybe not coming back in four years. And, and the last thing, I think we, make it, we must make it an easier place to do business in McAllen. We must convince staff that we're partners with our business, that those businesses employ people. That's how we added job during this economic downturn. They pay sales taxes, they pay business taxes, they pay property taxes that allow us to have these kind of great facilities for, that we do as a matter of our normal living in McAllen. Our parks and all that are funded, not so much by Avalorum taxes, but by the taxes that our business generate. And that doesn't mean giving away to business. What it means is being responsible, res excuse me, receptive to responsible businesses. And that's the thing I want to, to make sure that City Hall gets that message and provide that for our entrepreneurs. Dave. Commissioner Darling, uh, does McAllen need a new development code? Why or why not? Well, you know, uh, actually, I wrote the development code with Craig Farmer in 1979, so I, I guess it needs an upgrading. But you know, I, what, what I would like to see, you know, I'm going to tell you, I read the development code twice, and I read it before our staff did in City Hall, and I found a lot of things that I went out and said, gee whiz, you know, they're going to require opaque fences around our school playgrounds. I said, how could that be safe? For our children, how could that be a good from it? And so I saw a lot of holes in it. I would like us to see it. I think it needs improvement. I don't know if we need a wholesale change of that. I would like us to see what hasn't worked under our um, code. I know one thing hasn't. We don't allow for multi uses on that. I think we need to be more inve inventive where we mix commercial and, and allows for more innovative uh, use of the property. Uh, one thing, if you notice, we don't have any property zone in the whole city of McAllen for multifamily. Every multifamily project has to come in, and so we're reactionary. Our whole code has been reactionary and not progressive and prospective. And I think we do need to address our code. If the Uniform Development Code does that, then that's fine. But I think that's where we need to, to, to gear up and make sure that we recognize um, that we need to be. I was, it was just one question, but I wish I could ask a two-part question. One is that. You know, some, some people in the community, they, they know that you legal counsel for DHR and so forth, and they know some of the big business people in the community associated with the hospital and so forth. And I guess maybe some of them worry that there's going to be a conflict at some point in time, and I'm sure you've heard that as well, maybe. So what do you do if that comes? Obviously, you're going to, the interests of the city are going to supersede, but you still work over there. And the second part is one of the city commissioner candidates earlier said that he thought that the police and fire had been treated terribly over the last year. So I want to get your comment on that. Uh, a couple of things. Let, let's talk about the elephant in the room. I work for Alonzo, Alonzo Khan, too. He's the largest owner of that. I talk to Futuro Mark Allen more than I talk to Alonzo Khan, too. And that's <laughs> absolute truth. And I, I've done that over the last six years. So if you look at what my contact with Alonzo Khan, Khan too, is, and Futuro Mark Allen, I'm answering more to them than I do to him. And, and honestly, the only development that I've been involved with, with Alonzo in, in, in the last six years was the art village and the art district. And if, if that's an involvement that I should have a conflict with, then I hope I have a whole bunch of those conflicts. And so I recognize that. I've been associated with him for a lot of years. Uh, I never developed any property with him in McAllen because I did not want to have that conflict of interest, and that's what I'll, I'll continue. A white one? Oh, please and fire. Um, I, didn't, I didn't want an endorsement from the police and fire, but um, I guess I could say it today. I haven't a chance to too much. I'm going to meet with the police and fire a week from Thursday with both. You know, I, I um, did the first collective bargainings for the city. As I know those guys. And what, uh, I talked to the union organizer, I mean, uh, the federal mediator, about two weeks ago. And he said, you know those guys like you, they think you're, they think you're fair. 
but strong. And that, that's why I think you need to deal with them. You can't do tricks. I don't think you bring in lawyers from outside to deal with them. I think we have the talent in City Hall to deal with our police and fire across the table in an honest bargaining position because that's what the voters of McAllen said when they collect a bargain. And we can, we can put our differences aside and personal things aside, get contracts done, and provide the public service that our citizens deserve. Commissioner Donnelly, while we do understand the need to ensure that the city commissioners are seen as being open and above board about all the decision making that they do, do you feel that the current policy of commissioners going directly through the city manager to talk about issues and not talking to each other about it is appropriate? Would you change it or would you keep it? We, yeah, we hardly ever talk. I, I probably, on one hand, could say the times I've talked to a city commissioner last week on an issue. And, and we don't purposely email because that is a real problem. If you've got all the city commissioners emailing, that's, that's, um, that violates the law. But I do think it's very difficult to do things. One of it's we're on camera. And so it's very difficult to really maybe uh, uh, exchange ideas that would be either controversial or if you don't know it's going to sound right or whatever. And that really doesn't lead, it, lead itself to, I think, good government. And so I think there's opportunity um, possibly to communicate more and maybe have better training as to what the open government law requires. But it doesn't require us to talk to each other. I'm always amazed at the legislature. They go up and they already know what, how many gonna, people are going to vote for the bill and who's going to be Speaker of the House way before that started. And for the legislature to think that local government can function without talking to each other uh, outside of a meeting but not making decisions and not necessarily debating among a quorum is, I think, unrealistic to good government. And hopefully uh, we'll get over that and with the city attorney's help, educate the staff and maybe do a discourse of ideas uh, before the meetings happen in accordance with the law. Well, why don't Jim, you take two or three minutes to just to say what's on your Everybody's heart. Everybody's pretty tired. They don't want to they, they don't necessarily hear me. All, all I can say is, um, you know, I've been blessed with a lot of energy. I, I do have a lot of energy. and. Uh, <laughs> I've been blessed in working with our city and various, you know, I was general counsel for Pan Am and STC, and so I know a lot of those people. In, in over 30 years, you ought to get some knowledge, and so I think I have good knowledge. And I intend to use both of those um, experience to make our great city an even better place and to get a better place for people to get an education, to get a good job, enjoy quality of life like this wonderful facility. And that's something that we all can enjoy together. Um, and I would like to, I look forward to being your mayor. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank, uh, thank you, Jim Darling. We thank the candidates uh, for being here. And thank uh, MC and the cable channel, McAllen's cable channel, for recording all this. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. There's information out in the hall. <laughs>